Arcadian Vanguard presents the Wrestling News in your daily wrestling newscast for Saturday, February 24th, 2024. Good morning, I'm Mike Sepervivi. We begin today with WWE's Elimination Chamber Premium Live event, which just concluded at Optus Stadium in Perth, Australia, and was streamed on Peacock in the WWE Network. Drew McIntyre earned the right to face off against Seth Rollins for the World Heavyweight title at WrestleMania by winning the 2024 Men's Elimination Chamber. The finish came when the already eliminated Logan Paul knocked out Randy Orton with a pair of brass knuckles, leading to McIntyre's pin. Minutes before the finish, Orton pinned Paul to eliminate him from the match, which also featured Kevin Owens, Bobby Lashley, and L.A. Knight. The show opened with Becky Lynch outlasting her opposition to claim the Women's Elimination Chamber match, last eliminating Liv Morgan. Other participants eliminated before the finish were Naomi, Tiffany Stratton, Raquel Rodriguez, and Bianca Belair. The victory now ensures Lynch will face off against Rhea Ripley for the Women's World title at WrestleMania. Ripley's return to her native country ended in success as in the main event of the show, the Adelaide native repelled Nia Jax to retain the WWE Women's World title. Cody Rhodes and Seth Rollins made an appearance on the Grayson Waller Effect talk show where Rhodes challenged The Rock for a match at WrestleMania. I, I think I have a bit of an announcement myself. Rock, you indeed slapped me across the face. And at WrestleMania 40, I am wrestling Roman Reigns in the main event. But until then, I am wide open. So let's make it official. Rock, I want to wrestle you one on one, anytime, any place. Other results saw Damian Priest and Finn Balor hold on to the undisputed World Tag Team title when they turned back the challenge of Tyler Bate and Pete Dunne. And during the pre-show kickoff, Kyrie Sane and Asuka retained the Women's World Tag Team title with a victory over Candice LeRae and Indy Hartwell. Elimination Chamber aired just a few hours after last night's WWE SmackDown broadcast on Fox and featuring matches taped on February 16th at the Delta Center in Salt Lake City. In the main event, Drew McIntyre and L.A. Knight battled to a no contest with a brawl involving all participants in today's men's elimination chamber match closing out the show. Braun Breaker made his SmackDown in-ring debut on the program, defeating Dante Chen. In other results, the authors of Pain defeated the Street Profits, Pete Dunne and Tyler Bate beat Dominic Mysterio and J.D. McDonough, and Tiffany Stratton bested Liv Morgan in the opener. Now with a look at last night's TNA Wrestling, Here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. TNA Wrestling presented the 13th edition of No Surrender last night on pay-per-view in the TNA Plus app, live from the Alario Center in West Wego, Louisiana. In the main event, Mustafa Ali won his first championship for a major promotion as he knocked off Chris Sabin to win the X Division title. After the match, Ali addressed the crowd. I have been all over the world. I have wrestled the very best, the very best wrestlers in the world. And by far, that locker room right there, that show tonight in front of all of you, is by far the best locker room I have ever seen. Thank you. Good night. And remember that in Ali, we trust. Moose retained the TNA World Championship in a no-surrender rules match against Alex Shelley in 20 minutes and 7 seconds. Also retaining her title was TNA Knockouts World Champion Jordan Grace, who bested Giselle Shaw in 10 minutes and 38 seconds. Ace Austin and Chris Bay retained the TNA World Tag Team title, defeating the Grizzle Young Vets in the third match of a best-of-three series. MK Ultra. 
the team of Killer Kelly and Masha Slamovich became the new TNA Knockouts Tag Team Champions by defeating Havoc and Rosemary of Decay. The win marks MK Ultra's second run with the title. In other results, Josh Alexander beat Simon Gotch in Gotch's TNA debut, PCO defeated Khan by disqualification, and Eric Young beat Frankie Kazarian to earn a shot at the TNA world title during TNA Sacrifice on March 8th. This was the first edition of TNA No Surrender presented since 2019. For the wrestling news... I'm Lou Kippelman. AEW Rampage aired on TNT last night featuring matches taped Wednesday at the BOK Center in Tulsa, Oklahoma. The main event was a three-way match involving teams of three in which Top Flight and Action Andretti won out over the teams of Matt Seidel and Private Party and Penta El Zero Miedo Commander and Brian Keith. In other selected results, Roderick Strong beat Jake Hager and Mariah May beat Anna Jay. Turning to Japan, two former WWE talents won gold yesterday at New Japan Pro Wrestling's new beginning in Sapporo. In the main event, Nick Nemeth, the former Dolph Ziggler, defeated David Finley in 23 minutes and 7 seconds to become the new IWGP Global Heavyweight Champion. Also, Matt Riddle bested New Japan President Hiroshi Tanahashi to take the NJPW World TV title in 8 minutes and 53 seconds. Riddle now. We said it earlier. We could be seeing it. Got it here. Bro, stop. Matt Riddle, that's going to be it. We said time could go by in a flash. That match did. Eight minutes, 30 seconds, enough to end. The NJPW World TV Championship reign. Uh, well, the king of bros is king of TV, so it seems. Tanahashi suffered an ankle injury in that match. More on that news shortly. The first title change on Friday's show took place when Sho defeated El Desperado by countout to win the IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. In other selected results from Friday, never openweight champion Evil retained against Shota Umino. Mayu Iwatani retained the IWGP women's title against Mina Shirakawa, and Zack Sabre Jr. bested Yuji Nagata. Those results lead us into today's show, which was New Japan's second in as many days inside the Hokkaido Perfectual Sports Center. Hours before the event was set to begin, the company issued a statement announcing that Hiroshi Tanahashi was being pulled from the show due to a right ankle injury, presumably suffered in Friday's match against Matt Riddle. Toru Yano would replace Tanahashi in the 10-man tag team match, which also served as the final match of Kazuchika Okada as a regular for New Japan Pro Wrestling. Okada and Yano teamed with Tomohiro Ishii, Hiroki Goto, and Yoshihashi to defeat Matt Riddle, Jeff Cobb, Great Okan, Francesco Akira, and Callum Newman after Okada pinned Newman. Okada's contract with New Japan expired last month, and he is expected to sign with either AEW or WWE. The main event of today's show saw Tetsuya Naito retain the IWGP World Heavyweight title in a rematch against former champion Sonata. In other selected results from the show, Yoda Suji defeated Yuya Uemura in a hair vs. hair match, Taichi beat Shingo Takagi, and Doki upset Hiromu Takahashi. Prior to the card's beginning, a video vignette aired for Jack Perry using the nickname Scapegoat, where he challenged Shota Umino for a match on April 12th at Windy City Riot in Chicago. And with some news from outside the ring, here's the Wrestling News' Lou Kippelman. The 2023 Wrestling Observer Awards were announced yesterday in the latest edition of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter. Will Ospreay won the top prize of the Luthez Ric Flair Award for Wrestler of the Year, as well as Most Outstanding Wrestler. WWE was voted Promotion of the Year for the third time ever, and the first time since 2000. Among other Category A award winners were FTR for Tag Team of the Year, Eddie Kingston for Best Interviews, and AEW Dynamite for Best Weekly Show, with Match of the Year going to Kenny Omega vs. Will Ospreay from January 4, 2023 in Tokyo. In Category B, Paul Levesque was voted Best Booker for the second time, 
and Nick Khan was named Best Promoter, the first time a WWE promoter has won the award since 2000. In other selected Category B award winners, Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens vs. The Bloodline won for a feud of the year. Roman Reigns was voted Best Box Office Draw. Julia Hart won Most Improved. Don Callis won Best Non-Wrestler. Excalibur won Best TV Announcer. And AEW Revolution won Best Major Wrestling Show. Additionally, Best Pro Wrestling Book went to The Last Real World Champion by Tim Hordenbaker and Best Documentary went to the Chris Candido and Tammy Sitch episode of Dark Side of the Ring. The Wrestling Observer Awards are voted on each year by the readers of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter, and have been awarded since 1980. For the Wrestling News, I'm Lou Kippelman. And before we leave you today, we'd like to remind you that however you consume your content, you can find the wrestling news 24 hours a day and seven days a week across social media. On Twitter, follow us at Wrestling News AV. Our Facebook page is also Wrestling News AV. The wrestling news can also be found on the Arcadian Vanguard YouTube page. And for those who utilize Amazon Echo devices, just tell Alexa to play the Wrestling News podcast. And remember to make sure you add podcast at the end. Once again, For daily updates, breaking news, and more, follow the wrestling news across social media. And that's the news for today. If anything happens, we will be here to tell you about it. No clickbait, no paywall, just the wrestling news. The wrestling news is a division of Arcadian Vanguard, and the wrestling newscast is a production of the Arcadian Vanguard Podcast Network.